Dear brothers and sisters, do you find it hard to love others sometimes? Or do you at times feel accused when you're not able to show love and concern for someone else? When we know that God has commanded us to love one another, yet we cannot do so for certain people, quickly a sense of gap and rebuke may form within us over time. This also makes it harder for us to turn and face God as a whole. 1 John 3 verse 21 to 22 says, Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask because we keep His commands and do what pleases Him. Here, it tells us that we have to be wary of what condemns our hearts. If we are blameless when it comes to doing what delights the Lord and with our relationship with others, our hearts will not be laden with the fear and accusations brought forth by this lack. And whatever we do ask, when in sync with God, we will receive. So how do we do what delights the Lord in love? We have to very firstly submit ourselves to Jesus and thus be reconciled with the Lord. Then we can move on to talk about loving the people around us. If we are clear of these spiritual priorities, our faith journey will be more and more straightforward. Instead of mulling over the next step or solution like how can I make myself care more, how should I serve more, how should I please this person, will he or she be happy with my gift, we will instead be clear of what the Lord wants of us. That is, our genuine heart to care for what their souls need, to pray for them, and to help in targeted areas. So it really is not about how much, how well, or conditions we use, but whether we have understood God's heart to do the things we do for another. As we do so, we will surely find favour in the Lord's eyes. Like my daughter, sometimes when her brother is throwing a tantrum and demanding things, she would willingly offer to play with her brother to relieve me. When she does this, as a mother, I'm so delighted with her heart that understands me. So such is the same for God. He does not want us to dabble with many things, but just reconcile with Him first in all our perspectives, purposes and directions. Then from there, we go forth to love those He placed around us. However, we know that there are real challenges when it comes to loving others. And the main reason of it is all within our hearts. We know we cannot just tell ourselves to love and we will be able to do so. We will at times develop prejudice, judgment, conflict, disagreements and hurts as we interact with others. So even though we know we should give in some ways, but our hearts are not willing. It is always easier to love our own family or people that fight with our flow, but those who are stubborn, not responsive or lovable, we tend to lose patience or find it harder to sustain the heart to follow up with them. Also, we have this innate tendency to think and live for ourselves. We may even think as long as we are not hating anyone, it is fine. But not hating anyone does not equate to loving people too. So we can see that it all stems from our heart issues and we have to be careful not to leave it as a foothold for Satan to accuse us over time. So how can our hearts not condemn us when it comes to matters of loving people? Let us first read 1 John 3 verse 18. Let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Now we know that we cannot control our own hearts, weaknesses and temptations, but we can have a better guide to love others according to the truth we have received. And from there, it can be brought into actions of prayers, practical help for them, and instead of cherry picking who we like or would not like to give our attention and efforts to, we think about their situations, their background, their need for edification. Instead of just saying some casual passing phrases or texts, we move into actions of intercession, approaching them more, listening and ministering to them. And as we do so, we do not merely just say what pleases the person's ears, but as we build up the relationship, we should also inject some truth they need to know according to the word, like certain bondages they keep circling around, or some doubts they need answers to. In this day and age, people like the feel-good conversations, but find truth-infused dialogues quickly or offensive. But if we follow this trend, our love will be at a very superficial level. So let us pray to not just act in love, but it has to be built on God's truth. As we continue doing so, 1 John 3.19 goes on to conclude, This is how we know that we belong to the truth, and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. Those who belong to the truth will be willing to do according to it. So as we are interacting with people out of love and according to God's leading, our hearts can be assured that the Lord loves us and is delighted in our works. This is an important thing to know, just as a child needs affirmation from their parents, this makes our faith and works of love more and more rooted, instead of being wavered by man's responses or changes. Next, in order not to be condemned in matters of love, we definitely have to deal with the accusations residing in our hearts. Like mentioned earlier, 
our heart is the main roadblock to love and we cannot control it on our own terms. It can be a channel where Satan used to accuse us, especially for some of us who are more sensitive. Therefore, since it is out of our control and always subjected to influences of the forces of darkness, we have to draw strength from a greater source. As 1 John 3 verse 20 mentioned, we know that God is greater than our hearts and He knows everything. We must know that firstly, God is greater than our hearts. The different layers and nuances of things that we can experience in our hearts are much narrower compared to what God can. We can feel lousy because of a statement someone makes and hold on to it for a while or let it ruin our day. But God sees more than what we feel for that moment. Therefore, let us pray not to be constantly influenced by our feelings. Let us not forget the truth that God is bigger than all these things. Next, God knows every single thing. Nothing can be hidden from Him. Sometimes we may be deceived by present struggles. We do not know how things are like at the backstage of things, why people behave in such a way. But the Lord knows the whole picture. We may see someone who is poor and think that maybe lending money to them might be the way to help them. But later on, when we see them recklessly using the money, we may feel imbalanced. So we are often affected by changes around and therefore our love is not consistent. And that is also where accusations breed. So the Bible tells us now not to be limited in our own understanding, but be vigilant not to be easily deceived or quick to get accused. Instead, pray even more so often. Wrestle in our prayers, confessing our limitation to God and for a willing heart to intercede for another. Bless them and minister to them by His guidance. If there are gaps, pray for God to reveal it to us. Humble us down and respond in ways to benefit the relationship with them and bring them to seek God. Now this is spiritual warfare. When our hearts are shaken, we have to quickly come before God and confirm that indeed the Lord is greater than our hearts and all our difficulties. When we are starting to doubt and have insinuations, quickly come before God and affirm again that God knows more than we do and we want to yield our understanding to His, not our own. This is really where prayer plays a big part. Finally, as we bring our hearts before God, we receive liberation in the process. What is the key to this? It is our relationship with God. We cannot be condemned because we affirm that we have brought forth our concerns to the Lord, our honest limitations, and keep sanctifying our motives to love. To a point, even if we are not being received or having good responses from another, we also pray for the Lord to bless them, that they may turn to Him. Instead of thinking how the other person is feeling about you, or why are they not changing and such, let us not fall into the traps of narrowing our perspectives. This will only affect our faith and God's works being revealed to us. Do not let the evil one hold our hearts hostage or torment us on matters of accusations. When we come before the Lord and do according to His convictions, we will see evidences from the Holy Spirit working in us. Less doubts, more assurance. Less insinuations, more directions. Less emotions, more perspective. And less judgment, more love. Brothers and sisters, between people, there are really many different dynamics and complicated underlying issues. But we must see that if we do not deal with its manipulating effects and accusations formed in us, we are just leaving an open gate for attacks to our capacity to grow in love as children of God and for those in need to be edified in truth. Let us lay aside our past accusations, bad experiences, personal fears and comfort zone to love as the Lord is convicting us to and in the process, receive liberation and a thumbs up from the Lord. God bless.